as with all of our presentations here at Rural Roads, it's so important to us whether we are together in a face-to-face -face format or joining um, as a group online, we do an acknowledgement of our traditional lands. Royal Rose University acknowledges that our campus is located on the traditional lands of the Kosepsum and Lekwungen ancestors and families. It's with great gratitude that we live, learn, and work where the past, present, and future scopes of Indigenous and non-Indigenous students, staff, and faculty come together. This is a great time to test out that chat box function. So once again, looking at that black bar below, if you give the icon a click, the chat box will appear and let us know where in the world are you joining us from? What sector are you working in? And if you have any burning questions that you co you come into today's webinar with, please pop them in the chat box. As mentioned, we are here today to talk about our suite of global leadership programs here at RRU. My name is Selena Kunar, and I'm an education specialist here on campus. And I'm so thrilled to be here with Dr. Wanda Krauss, who is our program head and associate professor within our global leadership suite. Hi, Wanda. Thanks for being here. Hi, good morning, Selena. Um, as everyone can see, we're working from different locations. <laughs> And I'm working from Wasanich traditional family lands. And so that's just a little bit outside of Royal Roads, which is the Kasepsum and Lekwungen family lands as well. Uh, and I'd also like to acknowledge that we have Lisa Murray with us and she's with us to answer any questions that you might put in the chat. So yes, thanks, Selena, for that introduction. I'm Wanda Krause, Program Head of the Global Leadership Program. So we have a suite of programs which we'll describe in just a moment. And a little bit about me, uh, I've mostly been abroad. So much of my work connects to different countries, so different geographies and mostly the Middle East. So my work has been in Egypt, the UAE, Qatar, a little bit, um, in other Middle Eastern countries, so mostly the Arab Gulf. And I've also lived in six different countries, including Canada. So have spent most of my time abroad, although I'm originally from the Yukon Territory, which is just north of BC, for those of you who um, are outside of Canada and not quite sure, it's far up in the north beside Alaska. Uh, so that's a little bit about me and uh, happy to just so you know, if we uh, don't touch on any of your questions or thoughts, we will have a little bit of time at the end. So don't worry about that as we move along. Back to you, Selena. Thanks so much, Wanda. Love the joy of talking to Wanda again in just a few slides. So we have a short time today, uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, depending where in the world you're joining us from. I looked in the chat box. We have a global audience with us today. Oh my gosh, Chris, thanks so much for staying up late slash being up early for joining us today. That is just wonderful for us to be able to have you. Nori, a oh, big welcome. And of course, Lisa, who's popped a, a short introduction to our chat box as well. So we've got to uh, chit chat, get to know each other a little bit better. Feel free to continue popping introductions into the chat box. It's a great way for us to get to know who's in the room and make sure that the information we provide is helpful to all of you today. Our next slide, we're gonna dive in to a quick run through of the RRU experience. Of course, chat about our programs themselves, walk through our application and requirements, then of course, leave time for questions and conversations. That said, pop in any questions as they come, for you, come up for you as we go, and we'll work through those together. So with that, let's take a quick peek at Rural Roads University. We're so lucky that our global leadership programming is provided in a variety of delivery formats, program lengths. So it's a program that can really be customized to fit your needs. Because some of our delivery formats allow us to be together on campus, we like to show a quick snapshot of what you can expect to see when you join us on this beautiful space. Being located in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, 
uh, we're pretty lucky with our mild weather. So these photos do a good job of depicting what our campus looks like mostly year round. At Rural Roads, it's really important to us that we have small class sizes and we operate our programs in a conversational way. We believe that when your faculty and your professors are part of your peer group, our classes become think tanks and learning becomes a way of life on our campus. You'll notice very quickly in our programs, we are not about one-sided lectures or furious note-taking, but instead we're about exploring theories and sharing different perspectives together. Here at Rural Roads, learning is very much based on life. As a university for working professionals, one of our strengths is that our students are able to bring the challenges they're facing in their professional worlds into our classrooms. At Rural Roads, you won't notice a divide between theory and practice. We're doing real world problem solving in real time. And speaking of our classrooms, we're thrilled to have leaders fill our classrooms from corner to corner. So from folks such as your teaching faculty, um, we're so thrilled that our professors here, are what we call scholar practitioners. So folks who are not only academic experts in their field, but who are out in the world putting into practice what they're bringing to our classrooms. Other folks in the classrooms will include your cohort members. So your cohort is an intentionally crafted group of learners that you move through your program together from start to finish. And we make sure these cohorts are filled with students with unique backgrounds, perspectives, and experiences to complement and challenge your own. As mentioned, at Royal Roads, our programs are provided in a variety of formats. And that's because we pioneered this blended learning model where we're able to bring together the best of an online learning environment with in-person conversation and connections. We believe that the learning should not be bound within our, our beautiful walls here on campus, and that our students should have access to this life-changing education wherever they are in life or wherever they are in this world. So we'll talk a little bit um, in a few slides about all the different ways you can participate in our program, whether that be online, joining us for a short amount of time on campus, or being able to complete your program fully on campus with us in this beautiful space. So I'll actually pass it over to you, Wanda, to talk to us a little bit about global leadership at Royal Roads. Thanks again, Selena, for now that overview of your, um, for the student learning experience at Royal Roads, whether you're joining online for some of the courses, and we'll talk about which courses, or on campus, and you would all be coming to on campus, whether you're in the on campus program, or you are in the blended program. Can we move to the next slide, Selena? Thank you. So why global leadership? Um, now, obviously, we have leadership programs at Rural Roads and at many institutions, but what makes us unique within the program is that we extend this learning to concepts and understanding of interrelationships and systems that crisscross beyond just the domestic level or just the focus on what we would, or some would call Western scholarship and practice. And so what that means is we're very aware, so your instructors are very aware, your colleagues in the class with you are coming from many different places and also many different sectors. So we're not just focused on a particular sector or a specific geography such as North America. We include several, all geographies and link these to your learning. So global leadership first begins with learning about how you lead yourself. So that means thinking about the self in systems, how you operate, who you are, your growth. So that's where we begin whatever program you join, whether that's the master's, the diploma, or their certificate. 
that's the beginning or the foundation to then moving to thinking about how we lead within organizations. So shifting cultures and organizations, being fully aware of where the organization is operating at and finding those points, what we call leverage points within the organization to create change. Also trying very hard to understand from a systems perspective, um, not a linear perspective, but learning through that global awareness of how um, organizations are impacted in various different ways, where to find that leverage to create change. Our program then shifts that focus on organizational impact, performance, and change to thinking about how those organizations contribute to communities. So we have various courses, which we'll talk about in a moment, that speak specifically to these different areas. So the self and systems, organizations, organizational impact on communities, community development. And then lastly, the next layer, if you wish, is the broader macro level political and economic systems, and in particular, how they intertwine uh, and influence other systems, including organizations and the way we lead and vice versa. We connect all this within global leadership to be thinking a little bit more about the well-being of all and how our interconnectedness can contribute to the well-being of the planet, both today and into the future. Thanks, Selena. Next slide. All right, who is this for? We get this question all the time. <laughs> and you're going to see right in front of you on this slide a very long list. And honestly, this is a long list because our current students and our past students come from different sectors. And so we do not speak to a specific sector. We have students coming from international organizations, international non-governmental organizations. We have students coming from the UN. Increasingly, we have students who, uh, we've had a few come from indigenous organizations. And in the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about where students will go after they graduate but we're observing that more students are, are finding or landing jobs within Indigenous governments or, or federal or provincial governments that um, are connected to Indigenous communities and um, Indigenous community well-being as a concern. Human rights organizations, uh, students enter from human rights organizations uh, and if not, we have students ending up in human rights organizations. So you'll, a pattern you'll notice here is a little bit of a lateral move from where students begin and where students end. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. Uh, and I won't necessarily read all these different examples. You can see them. Um, social enterprise businesses, global oriented social purpose organizations, that's an increasing or a growing sphere as well. Entrepreneurs, that's also a growing sphere. And as you can see and read here, we're, we're very interested in supporting students who not only are coming from organizations and work uh, that's related to climate action and planetary health, but we're very keen on supporting students to be prepared to work in such fields. Next slide, Selena. Thank you. Okay, so we'll, um, I'll provide a bit of an overview of the three different programs. We've got more, but starting off with describing the three, one being a certificate, one being a diploma, and the third being a master's. The graduate certificate is a nine credit course, uh, actually two courses. It's five months. The second course is actually a large course made of um, three courses all together. So uh, it's a five month journey where you're learning with master's students 
and diploma students together. Diploma students have an extra two elective choices. So you will have, in addition to the graduate certificate, um, two more courses that would take you to the diploma stage. And the Masters of Arts includes two different kinds of streams. So either uh, you could come on campus to do an MA in Global Leadership, or you can choose the blended. In addition to that, you can either choose the regular, we have normally the 24 months, which is obviously two years of 36 credits, or you can squish that into 13 months, still 36 credits. So know that if you do consider the 13 month, it is intensive. Any student who's taken it will tell you it's intensive, very, very rewarding as well. Uh, but you are also expected to dedicate your entire focus to your master's. So uh, you wouldn't be working if you were doing the intensive stream. Thanks, Selena. Next slide. Okay, so I'll quickly run through what the courses are for each of the, um, the certificate, the diploma, and the master's. We have, and as I mentioned, everyone would take GBLD, the first course, GBLD 501, which is called Personal and Theoretical Foundations to Global Leadership. This course offers a very broad overview of global leadership. So you'll understand what global leadership is and more particularly how to be a global leader. The foundations being the theory of it and how you can focus a little bit more on um, what it means to grow and the different steps that would entail. We take all that and continue in GBLD 505 with that self-growth, going even deeper into self-transformation and thinking a, a little bit about uh, the capacities that are required to be a global leader. Within this course, uh, everyone comes to campus at least for two weeks. The on-campus students are on campus to start and the blended students come for the two weeks to join the on-campus students. So it's um, a two-week period of time that's very intensive. Whether you're in the two-year program or the 13-month, it's an intensive time of learning. Where, as Selene had mentioned, you're not just learning theory. You're applying that theory to practice. And we give you a number of different activities and exercises for you to practice global leadership. Uh, so to really grasp what it means to be uh, working with global challenges, and you'll have real, real world challenges to work on. Um, and we have organizations that will come in and offer, so we have one every year, so <laughs> that would be enough for students to work on, uh, one global leadership challenge that an organization is dealing with, and they would need your help uh, to solve. So it's a very rewarding time um, and a very intensive time of learning. So with the diploma, that's also, as I mentioned, what you'd be doing plus your two additional uh, elective courses. Thanks, Selena. Okay, and I know this won't make sense to start because this is um, this includes many of our courses, but essentially what I'd like to point out here is how, as I described, there's the on-campus stream and the blended stream of students, where, so at what points you would come together, you would begin the very first course, it's actually online together. And then you would, uh, for those who are doing the on-campus program, you'd come to campus, and those doing the blended program, you'd come to campus just for the two weeks. So you can see, that um, part of the second course is shared. And then you would choose your elective courses. Of course, I'm speaking to those who would go into the MA. Um, and those who are doing your diploma, yes, you do two of the courses that you can see 
described here. This isn't all the courses. These are the courses we offer in the Global Leadership Program. You'd also have a choice outside the program um, within Royal Roads University as well. So you could see that uh, many of the courses that we have online, we also have on campus. However, not all. We have a, a greater uh, number of courses online at present. And so just quickly to name some of the courses, I won't go into the description at this point, but for you to have somewhat of an idea of what is possible to learn. We have navigating geopolitical dynamics of global communities. Again, as you can see, both online and on campus. So students go into either the online or the on campus taught by different instructors. And then we have community development in the global context. We have managing difficult relationships within and across community dynamics. The International Cultural Leadership Field Trip, uh, we just hosted, we just completed. It was online um, because of the pandemic. We just couldn't go abroad. However, students still enrolled in the online version. It was extremely intensive. The learning was fantastic. But uh, I'll just share that we will uh, as soon as the pandemic <laughs> lifts and we are allowed, we've thought that uh, instead of hosting an online course next round, we would have uh, an international opportunity. So whenever the pandemic lifts, we will go international again. Uh, we've you know, and I'll describe a little bit more and, and give you some insight into all that we do when we go abroad. Uh, previously, we've gone abroad to Ecuador. Uh, the online was within India. And uh, the next time we go abroad, we're contemplating India again, but we haven't decided which country yet it will be in. Um, and again, it's a very exciting course to take for most students. And we also have evaluation in a global context. I'll just share at this point because I think it will apply, though I cannot promise. <laughs> For those of you who would be joining in the fall of 2022, we are proposing another course, which is uh, not one of our own within the program, but in the completion stream, we have, as you can see at the very end, and I'm kind of skipping over, and I hope that's okay. I'm skipping over 612. I'm going straight to the 640. We are hoping by that time to offer two elective courses that would make up a third possibility for finishing your master's. So right now, um, and I, you know, if, again, I skipped over the 612 and looking at the 640, that's the capstone project where you would do some research at, or inquiry and uh, be focused in a very practical sense on supporting an organization, a group of people, a community of people, a certain kind of demographic. So your research isn't just theoretical, it's applied. You have a supervisor to help you through that journey. In uh, Or you can do 641. So in GBLD 641, you have the choice of an internship. So still doing research, but for an organization where they're giving you that direction and support, you also have an academic supervisor to help you through that journey. And what I was just explaining is we're hoping by the time you get there <laughs> to this stage that you would also have a third choice, which is to do two courses outside of Canada. So that would uh, offer you the opportunity for those who um, would like to get more experience in different countries, uh, the opportunity to do so. And then just 
backing up <laughs> to address the, uh, we count one, two, three, four, the fourth box, where it says second residency. For those who are in the blended program, you'd be coming a second time onto campus. And that's during uh, GBLD 612. That time, um, actually GBLD 612 is a six credit course where you'd be learning how to do your inquiry or research, whether you're doing the capstone or the internship, there are a particular set of skills that you would need to prepare with. And so you'd, you'd get all those in this course. And here again, you're joining your on-campus cohort within Victoria. All right. We'll, we'll take questions at the end, so um, just write them down or keep them in mind, please, as we move along. We'll have opportunity for that. Here are some pictures of, um, you know, of us visiting different places in Ecuador as we went. This is, these are pictures from a couple of trips as we went down the Amazon, as we visited uh, a village that, uh, is challenged on a number of different levels and where students really got to be immersed in understanding that context-based set of challenges within the country, within the community, actually very particular to this village uh, where water shortage was the biggest of their issues amongst, uh, of course, several issues related also to poverty. Uh, so students, at this point, students really want to start applying their skills and what they've learned in their courses. But here, it's, a, it's an opportunity to still deepen your learning. Uh, I know students really want to help and support and offer advice, but really, it's still a point of, of learning and connecting and engaging with these communities that are always very welcoming and glad to receive us and help us learn. Uh, so uh, the other picture, upper left, is in Quito. Uh, we were with a military college in the upper right, so connecting to their students, bringing some of the learning that uh, students have acquired and sharing and discussing different thinking and approaches to common challenges, so global challenges that affect us in North America, where we're located, and in uh, Ecuador. And then on the lower right, that's where students got to go through um, a couple of villages, the Amazon, and really got to understand some of the challenges that Indigenous communities are facing presently. And so with that, deepening their understanding of uh, the challenges of Indigenous communities globally, so making those interconnections through those engagements and having the opportunity to ask questions. <sighs> Lots of rich learning there that we hope um, we'll be able to offer with an excursion abroad next round. Thanks, Selena. Okay, and back to Selena. Thank you so much for that, Wanda. Um, we didn't give you a lot of time to talk about all of these things. So much, much, much appreciate the spin through our global leadership programs. Um, I had some questions come in through private message. So we'll be sure to answer those together. Once we get to the end of the uh, formal presentation today, we have just a few slides to go. But this, as Wanda mentioned, is a great time to start popping those questions in the chat box for all of us to discuss together in just a few slides. So with that, let's dive into these next few slides. We're gonna talk about how to apply. So a component of how to apply is understanding the different admission criteria and requirements for our global leadership programs. Here at Railroads University, we have two different admission pathways. We have our standard admissions as well as our flexible admissions. So for standard admissions, we're looking for a four-year or comparable undergraduate degree from a recognized post-secondary institution with a GPA of a B. Along with that, we're gonna look for a minimum of three years of general leadership experience and a demonstration of significant cross-cultural experience 
gained through work or travel. Looking at flexible admissions. So flexible admissions, is something we're so proud of here on our campus. Flexible admissions really allows us to create these diverse and rich cohorts filled with students who both have academic experience within higher education, but also that practical application in the workplace as well. So for flexible admissions, those folks who may not have a traditional academic background, but who have worked in their field extensively for many years um, are invited to apply to our programs. As mentioned at Rural Roads, we don't have a clear divide between theory and practice in our learning, and nor do we in our admissions requirements either. So for flexible admissions, we'd be looking for prospective students with at least 10 years of professional experience with three years of leadership experience, as well as a demonstration of significant cross-cultural experience gained through work or travel. You'll notice we have an asterisk every time you see the word leadership. That's because within our School of Leadership Studies, leadership is defined in so many different ways. So we're not necessarily looking for someone who has a title of manager, director, that sort of positional leadership within your organization. We recognize that leadership is comprised of a variety of different things. Are you motivating and encouraging and guiding a team towards a shared goal? Leadership can work up, can show up in volunteer settings. Leadership can show up in a variety of different personal experiences as well outside of your workplace. So we highly recommend checking out our website to learn more about what leadership means to us within this admission requirements, because sometimes that word can scare folks. Oh, I'm here to learn about leadership. I'm not a leader. You know, more often than not, if you are someone looking at this program and having that thought about yourself, you most definitely have that leadership experience. And we are so excited to have conversations with you about your background, personal, professional, academic, to help understand where those leadership experiences are shining through. Sometimes our learners, they can, you know, you can end up self-selecting out of a program like this, where you go, oh, I don't know, do I have that? Because you're just doing the thing. You're really not having the opportunity to understand the type of leadership you're putting out in the world and that you are indeed showing up as a leader and that a program like this can help hone those skills to help you and the world at large succeed. I am clearly very passionate about this, so please check out our website for more or connect with us anytime to continue the conversation. Coming back to the admission requirements, you'll notice in the smaller text on the slide, we share that applicants who are assessed under flexible admissions, including those who meet the degree requirement, but perhaps not the GPA requirement, will normally be required to take academic writing and critical thinking and attain a minimum B plus in that course and have that finished five weeks before your start date. The reason we do that is because we want to make sure that as our learners entering our graduate studies programs, you have all the skills you need to dive right in and get going. While you're immersing yourself in all of this different learning, connecting with your cohort members, the last thing we want for you is to be going, what's APA again? How do I cite this? This course is well loved on our campus for exactly that reason. It helps ensure that our learners who might be a bit further away from their last academic venture or those who don't have that academic, uh, traditional academic background, you have all the skills you need to enter the program and hit the ground running. Because it's so well loved on our campus, we do offer it once a month, if not a few times a month as well. So if you have any questions, again, always here to help. So how exactly do we apply? Well, as of most things these days, it begins with an online application. And that online application comes with a fee of $128.81. And once that application is in, we then look towards some supporting documents. So supporting documents are things such as official transcripts, a personal statement, a detailed resume, or two letters or and two letters of reference. Again, our website is such a handy tool 
when you're moving through submitting these documents, creating these documents, thinking about these documents. Because on our website, we have some tips and tricks about different questions you should be answering and things like your personal statement to help guide your writing. We have some tips and tricks around the different categories you should include in your resume to ensure that all of your accomplishments shine bright. And then some practical information around how do you send your official transcripts to our offices, who can be your two referees, and how they can send their letters of reference to our offices as well. So again, all on our website, but also with us if you'd like to just chat. And then for those folks who have completed studies outside of Canada, sometimes if applicable, we'll look for a credit evaluation report or English language proficiency score as well. But again, always happy to continue the conversation about those things as well. Looking towards our upcoming intakes. Well, October 3rd, 2022 is the golden day. It is the day where our blended and on-campus 13 and 24 month, our graduate diploma and graduate certificate all begin. Because as Wanda shared, regardless of which program, which delivery style, which program length you are jumping into, you will all begin together. And then as your different um, credentials complete, so for example, your graduate certificate, you are welcome to pop out of that learning environment, get your credential and continue on your way. Or if you're enjoying your learning, you'd like to continue, you love your cohort, you can continue on and move right into that graduate diploma or right in the Master of Arts program. And we do that to make sure that our students have that opportunity to continue on. So with that said, our start date of October 3rd, 2022 for all of our global leadership programs, which will put all of our programs application deadline at June 3rd, 2022. So if you're interested in participating in our 2022 intake, please at the least have that online application in as that signals to our offices that you're interested in a seat in the program. Here at Rural Roads, we move through our application process on an ongoing basis. So that means we're not actually gonna wait until July 3rd, 2022 to take a look at all the applications that have come in. Instead, what we do once your online application is in and your supporting documents are submitted, your file is adjudicated, and we're able to let you know about your seat in the program. So with that said, our programs do tend to fill up quite quickly. So please, with that online application in, it gives us an idea of which program you're interested in, which start date you're interested in, and how we can support you through completing your online application. So again, if you have any questions, you know where to find us. At Royal Roads, we have a variety of student services uh, teams available here to help support your journey, journey from new student all the way through to alumni. So as you can see on this slide, we have student engagement, Indigenous student services, international student services. We have our recreation center staff, learning, career learning and development, counseling services, accessibility services, and financial aid and awards. Financial aid and awards, we get a lot of questions about so we wanted to amplify their website and their local phone numbers for those folks who wanted to get in touch directly. Our financial aid and award specialists are so wonderful and have their fingertips on resources that could be available to you, both internal to Royal Roads or external as well. So if you have any questions about things like loans, awards, scholarships, or any other types of funding, please connect with our awards office as they're more than happy to help. And speaking of people happy to help, I'm sure you have noticed Lisa Murray in our chat box providing a bazillion links to help navigate what we've been talking about today and make sure you know where to find them on our website easily. So Lisa is just one beautiful example of the team we have here on our campus, eager to answer any questions you might have about these programs or any others on our campus as well. So you can find Lisa and her team 
at learn.more at ruralroads.ca. And if you're joining us internationally, Lisa's international counterparts at International Admissions and Registration are more than happy to help at learn.more.international at royalroads.ca. And with that, we have come to the end of our, our formal presentation and our slide deck for today. So what I'll do is I'm gonna stop sharing our slides so our screen might change together now. And let's dive into our chat box and start answering some questions. So I'm gonna take a quick cruise through, oh yes, Lisa providing tons of awesome links to things such as our signature pedagogy for Rural Roads Institution, so our learning, teaching and research model, a variety of links to our program pages, our admission requirements, oh, and a link to our reading and writing course as well. So we have a question here from Alex from Hong Kong. So Alex is applying for the 13 month on campus MA program for 2022 fall intake as an international student. Oh, yay. In case the pandemic goes on and the border is closed, will the program defer or can I take the courses online from my home city? Oh, that's a great question. So I'm not sure if Wanda, you'd like to answer that or if Lisa perhaps is typing in the chat box. Um, but I will pass it over maybe to you, Wanda, to let us know um, what, what we could experience. Yeah, thanks, Alex, for that question. And I'll just start off saying whatever I answer now can be changed, overturned, or, you know, maybe we'd have a different view six months from now. Um, so just to keep that in mind, <laughs> given that the information that we receive uh, for all institutions in Canada. So uh, what I would say to you would be what would apply to all institutions. And um, where sometimes, to be honest, I'll just share all institutions in Canada are sometimes slow to come up with solutions for international students. Um, not that we do not have you on our radar and, and we we do want to support you and, and make sure that that journey towards learning happens um, as, as painlessly as possible. What I can say at this point is, uh, so far there has been allowances for students um, previous to this current ban to begin their studies online and then transition to Canada. So that was in place. My, and I'll just say my um, anticipation is that that would be in place by the time your program would begin in fall of 2022. Again, institutions are slow um, for the most part. So I, I don't know at what point that would be a decision. And that's a decision across the board, not just for Royal Roads. So I would suggest that you stay in close contact with our international admissions team. They will let you know right away when something changes for the better. Um, at this point, otherwise, and I hate to say this, but yes, you would have to defer if we were going with the current situation, which is there is a ban. Um, and this ban has, in place, has been in place for just a couple of weeks. I don't think because this is, and I'm, you know, I'm very aware as I'm connected to international students, this is impacting so many students. I, I really don't see the situation continuing. I really don't just because it's impacting too many students for it to be ignored. So please, Alex, um, connect to our international admissions team and they will let you know. Uh, and I'm just reading, Lisa has put in the chat, as Wanda indicates, if you are an international prospective student, please contact, please connect with the international admissions team. And here is your email um, to connect with them. It's learn, as Selena had mentioned, learn.more.international at railroads.ca. You might just want to cut and paste that one. I hope I've answered your question, Alex. Again, it's it's not a clear linear answer, but you know, to conclude, there is hope. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Wanda. And yes, please get connected with that email there. Our teams are um, always, uh, always on alert, but definitely so as we move through COVID-19 for learners who are impacted within this program or others on our campus as well. So they truly are the, the best people to keep you up to date as things keep changing. Um, Wanda, we had a question come in. Um, does the internship need to be completed in Victoria slash BC slash Canada, or can that be done outside of those places? Mm -hmm. uh, it can be done anywhere. Uh, so if you are located somewhere else in Canada or elsewhere, uh, you can connect with a local, so an organization or community organization, whatever form that exactly is typically an organization that is local to you. Uh, in exceptional cases, we also have the possibility of connecting with and working with an organization that's online. That's the exception. But what I'm um, trying to convey anyway is that there are many different ways you can do an internship. Typically, it is a place you can access. So yes, if you are somewhere else, uh, you would want to look for an organization that uh, once the pandemic lifts or even perhaps as is now, you can access that organization, connect with the organizational leaders and have those more intimate one-on-one -on -one, um, in-person conversations if possible. Awesome, thanks Wanda. The next question here, um, I can actually take a crack at answering. All right. We have someone interested in learning more about if we have residents available for folks if they're participating blended or on campus. So at this time, if you're looking at the on fully on campus program at Royal Roads, we do not have long-term uh, accommodations available. That said, we do have our team on campus, our wonderful student services folks who can help answer any questions you might have um, about Victoria, Langford, Colwood as a whole to help understand what sort of accommodations might be out there. So I can um, add their information into our follow-up for anyone who would like to reach out. For those folks who are joining us for those short-term two-week um, on-campus residencies, we do have short-term accommodation available. I'll share that there are our old Royal Roads Military College dorms. So they may not be five-star, but they definitely have a desk, they definitely have a bed, and they definitely have a closet. So they get the job done. I myself am a current learner in this program and despite being in Victoria, I did elect to stay on campus during my residency as much of my cohort was from outside of Victoria. So it was a really exciting opportunity to get to know my classmates better and participate in um, what our students have fondly called lounge learning. So those moments where, you know, class is done, you've worked on your team assignments, you've gone out for dinner, you're back in your uh, dormitory lounge, everyone's in their sweatpants, and you're just kind of chatting about what you explored today. Those for me um, with my cohort have, were some of the most meaningful memories I have from my residency experience. So um, Lisa, I'm sure we'll pop some links into the chat box. Oh, as she has already, thanks so much, Lisa, to explore our self-serve online booking system. We do have um, a limited number of rooms available. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in certain intakes, check out that website and make sure you get your room booked. We have, most of our rooms are the room and then we have a shared bathroom situation, though we do have rooms that have an ensuite bathroom as well, as well for um, a few extra dollars a night. Um, so to explore all that, Lisa shared a link in our chat box. Um, I'll move on to our next question, Wanda. We had a question around working. Is it possible to work if you're participating in the 13 month or 24 month programs? Yeah, thanks for that question. So I can clarify a couple more points. So it's so when we say work, it's not just about work. We know that students are often um, 
Oh, engaged with something perhaps uh, that occupies, and it could be family related, it could be a private issue, uh, that occupies a, a large part of their life and their attention. We would suggest that if you already know that this is the case for you, um, that you elect, and you're still in, obviously in, interested in the program, that you elect to take the 24 month. Uh, with the 24 month, we know that actually the majority of students are working or are attending to other uh, life challenges or demands. So the 24 month allows you to juggle a couple of things in life. It's still intensive. Um, but the 13 month is super intensive, let me just say. So, and if you talk to any student who has been in the 13 month, um, they will confirm that. We have had students begin the 13 month. So this is also possible for you to try the 13 month. We don't like that you shift back and forth, just a heads up, um, because that is a bit disruptive to your study and your cohort as well, because we, we love to keep you within a particular cohort so that you can deepen that learning with a, a team or a group. Uh, that will be, you'll find so important for your, uh, those bottlenecks in your, your learning where you need your team members to be with right beside you as you move along. Um, the 13 month won't allow you to work or um, give attention to other areas in life that that may come up. So if you know that you need to give attention elsewhere, do the 24 month, start there. Um, and it, you won't be able to switch to the 13 month as easily. We have had, I think, maybe one student switch to, the, or two, switch to the 13 month very, very early on, obviously. Um, but typically, <laughs> we found students switch to the 24th, uh, the 24 month. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Chris says, you mentioned exploring a third option to complete the MA course. Can you elaborate more about it? Yes. So uh, we still don't have this yet put through for acceptance uh, within the program yet, just for you to be aware. I have put it on your radar just so you know that this is what we're working on and hoping to have by the time you join. Uh, but the third option, so remember we have the capstone option, we have the internship option. The third, which we would love to offer, will be the possibility of you instead doing two three credit courses to make up six credits. Okay, so the internship is six credits, the capstone is six credits, two courses abroad would be the equivalent, so six credits. You would do these two courses in a country, um, obviously outside Canada, because the purpose of this is for you to, if, especially if you feel you haven't quite at the end of your program, uh, gained the international competencies and experiences that you feel you still need for whatever reason, maybe it's the job prospect that you are eyeing at that stage, um, or where you've determined for yourself you'd like to work abroad for sure. Um, this gives you the opportunity to connect to employers, perhaps as you're in that country, uh, to gain the experience in any case internationally that you feel your future employer, if you are switching, uh, may want. And so, and for others, it's just the experience. You get to go abroad and do two courses. You can do those two courses at the same time. So theoretically, if you think about it, you could complete that completion option within three months. Uh, so I think it's a sweet deal for many students. <laughs> and I know it's gonna be a popular one. Um, and of course, if you have questions as we move along, please feel free to connect. We don't have all the pieces in place. The choice would be actually probably dependent upon those uh, institutions and universities that we accept, uh, where students can do their, uh, their, their two courses. So we'll have probably three or four options. Um, and uh, we're working on those options at the moment. 
And there may be the possibility that we could also negotiate and discuss which um, other institution, if there is one you have your heart set on. So there, there would be some flexibility as I foresee as we're creating this option uh, where we can discuss where you might do these two courses. I hope this answers your question, Chris. Oh, Wanda, that is so exciting. Yeah. I am so happy with the completion pathway I have now, but that one is so attractive and something I absolutely would have pursued. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys, that sounds awesome. You have a variety of options to mm -hmm. look towards um, moving through this program, but also completing this program as well, which is so exciting. Um, I see we've come to the end of the questions in the chat box. Mm -hmm. So I'll give a few extra seconds for um, questions that are coming in. Um, Wanda, a question that I get a lot, which I recognize there is no, no concrete answer to, but I'll ask aloud in case anyone is wondering, if I'm, I'm in the 24 months, I have a full-time job, I have a family, how much time can I expect to put aside uh, per week if I'm moving through this program? Typically, uh, you would be expected with your course participation and your assignments and everything to be putting in the typical work week of about 40 hours, uh, give or take, honestly, give or take. Some international students will take, they'll require more. So just be aware that this is based on our experience with domestic students uh, and my experience with international students is that you would really have to allocate a bit more. Um, it doesn't mean you, if you're international, you can't work. Uh, we do have within Canada a set limit of how many hours anyway that you could work per week. That is the situation in Canada. Um, but yeah, it depends on each student and, and how fast you get through your readings. Some of the readings, we'll have bottlenecks as well. Some weeks will be much longer uh, in terms of that, those amount of hours, and some weeks will be shorter. Yeah, um, and I, I guess a couple points that I'll just, I said I would talk about where students end up. So I'll just take a few seconds to, <laughs> I know we're at the end of, of time, just to say that uh, we get the question quite often, and quite honestly, we see students um, endeavoring as they're through the pro as they're moving through the program to very simply just sit with the competency. So not so much being set on a particular outcome or a particular job or moving up in their workplace. It's much more so being able to do their job with way greater capacity, having, having that confidence to go out and, and offer leadership solutions, knowing that you've got the ability now in the background and you really know what you're doing um, and you really know how to lead others. So honestly, that confidence and that know-how will become so important. That will become your focus as you go through the program. Thanks so much for adding that, Wanda. We, as you mentioned, we are, we're now at a perfect time to close with all of our questions in the chat box answered. Um, but that said, the conversation isn't over and the question time um, is definitely not over. You can continue chatting with us. Um, find us, learn.more at rollroads.ca, learn.more.international at rollroads.ca. Um, Lisa's shared um, a comment about some of the other people you can connect with too, our alumni. So Alicia has shared that we encourage applicants to chat with our amazing global leadership alumni who can share their RRU experience and how they're applying their learning. So if you'd like to speak with alumni from this program, you can connect directly with Lisa at lisa.murray at rollroads.ca. And I see Wanda has popped her email in our chat box as well. So Wanda one Kraus at rollroads.ca. And I'll be sure to share all those uh, emails in our follow-up communication, as well as a link to today's recording. So hopefully you have that information at your fingertips um, and more questions start bubbling. Wanda, was there anything else you'd like to add before we close out today? Just really quickly, um, 
what I saw for our statistics very recently, I think that was yesterday, Monday, we have already registered more than a quarter of seats for the fall. Yeah. Um, so even though we mentioned summer is the deadline, just be aware that um, you don't want to wait. <laughs> you really don't want to wait that long. So if you're interested in the program, we're happy to support you at this point. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that update, Wanda. That's awesome. Um, to everyone, another big, big uh, well wishes for the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, um, depending where in the world you're joining us from or when you're watching today's recording as well. We look forward to chatting with you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone.